Well, ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for a gentleman that uh, has actually made his comedy debut here in Wilmington a couple years ago. He's now back to Long Island. Please put your hands together for Mersh. I just want to start off by saying it's going to be back in Wilmington, North Carolina. Wilmington, North Carolina, where every fucking skank thinks they're an actress because they don't have an episode of What We Hell. I, I love this town. I kind of miss Wilmington because it's the only place where I felt like I had an 80% chance of meeting my soulmate and a 68% chance that she had the same STD that I do. Which, what the fucking odds of that hooking up? So my name is Marsh. For those of you that aren't familiar, that's an old Irish name. Uh, translated loosely, it means recently acquitted. So it's, uh, I just got back from Philly. I'm recording my own CD right now, actually, uh, out there in Philly. And I was working on some stuff down there. And I've never been to Philadelphia before, and I fell in love with this city. Uh, if anybody ever gets a chance to go to Philadelphia, uh, I might be being a little biased, because like, I'm also a big history buff of American history. And, I kind of wish Tom Hanks had AIDS. So, I mean, the city is already <laughs> fucking bad a thousand. Thankfully, the ladies out of this next one, but I got a poll for the gentlemen in the audience, all you guys out there. You guys ever been in a bar really late at night, and you meet some hot chick, but you can't figure out if she's drunk, foreign, or retarded? <laughs> I'm back in New York, so they let them all in there at that hour. It was just something they could do. I met a chick like that recently at a bar, turned out she was all three, which I didn't even think was really impossible. Kind of threw that whole consent issue into play. Luckily, she was hot enough that I didn't give a shit. I mean, was just, she was what I like to call consent is optional hot, which is just a whole new breed of hot. Let me tell you, that chick was great. But uh, we dated for a few months, on and off. Uh, things didn't really go the way I wanted to. Um, she told me a lot about myself, though. You know, like, apparently there's a really fine line in between fun-loving scam and registered sex offender. Like, I just... I had to get a letter to find that shit out. You're fucking laughing, but you know how hard it is to not own a laptop and be a stand-up comedian? It's just fucking impossible. Look up all my child porn in the lobby of a Hotel Six. That shit is hard. <laughs> so look, look, I'm doing work stuff. It's classified. <laughs> I ended up breaking up with the girl. We had a really vicious breakup too. In fact, it, the way I can sum up how vicious this breakup went, it's uh, the last text message I sent to this girl was, "I hope you have a kid," and he pulls an Adam Walsh, which I don't think was real nice. <laughs> A little extreme, I know. Emotions were running high. I'm like, all my relationships stuck too, man. Like, even the girl I lost my virginity to, we broke out really quickly after that. It's really beautiful, half black, half Puerto Rican girl. I used to like to joke that I didn't lose my virginity, that she stole it from me. Which, yeah, see? I tried to tell the grandparents that it was a funny joke, but they did not appreciate it at all. I think they were just mad though, because I included it in the speech at a Sweet 16, which was probably not a uh, place. Maybe it was the fact that I was 25, you know, and it was just a kind of I think they were mad too, because I referred to her vagina as a future cr uh, criminal factory, which I don't think they liked either. That was not funny. No, I don't know what you guys think of racist from that last year, but I'm not a racist at all. There's nothing I hate more in this world than intolerance, racially, except Greeks. I also don't like Greeks. <laughs> I'm not a racist, all right? I tell people all the time, I'm not a racist, okay? Some of my best drug dealers are black people. Right? <laughs> I dated a deaf girl once. <laughs> it's a funny asshole, huh? There's people with disabilities out there. I would never make fun of somebody with disabilities. Except for this girl. 
I was like, fucking go over to the kitchen. It's really hot. And like three dates in, she wants me to learn sign language. <laughs> you know, so, well, it's like, fuck you, you're the one who's different. Like, why are you <laughs> Where in the manual does it say, like, I have to do shit now? Like, where am I in the bus? Really? Like, why do you communicate with me better? I'm like, yeah, but if you were crippled, I'm not gonna just stop walking around because I hold up. I don't know. If I was dating a black girl, I'm not gonna just start showing up late to work every day. I'm like, not gonna have a future as a rapper or some shit. I don't know. You're gonna be deaf, you can't afford to be lazy too. What the fuck, man? Life lesson number one when God hates you, you have to work harder. Romans 20 17. I don't know. That's my Bible verse. That's my body. I like to just make up fictitious Bible verses. They just say the most horrific shit in the world, and I say, I got that out of the Bible. And people just leave you alone in New York. That's it. No, I mean, it's obvious that Native Americans don't have a soul. I mean, it says so in the Bible, right? I don't know exactly the passage. It says the Antichrist is going to be born in uh, Hawaii, and his middle name is going to be Hussein, in 1 Corinthians 27 13. I'm just going to prove it, you know? Let me shit this turn into a clay rally real quick. I'm done. Thank you guys. My name is Mary.